Both the Syrian crisis has spilled beyond Syria's borders. Last week, the United Nations Refugee Agency announced that more than two million people have fled the fighting over the past two and a half years. Refugees have gone to a number of countries, including Egypt. And Carl Penhall reports from Cairo. It's a hot wait applying for safe haven. But these Syrian refugees have been through far worse to get this far. He says the places I passed through to escape from Syria were like ghost towns. It was like a scene from the video game Resident Evil. And just Resident Evil. Ahmad Abu Shami fled to Egypt a year ago. But he's only just now registering with the United Nations Refugee Agency. The UNHCR says it's dealing with about a thousand asylum applications a day in Cairo. The rush has come amid concerns of growing hostility against Syrians following Egypt's military coup. Looming U.S. airstrikes are fueling anxiety among the refugees to get their papers in order. Since July, the interim regime has applied stricter entry rules, requiring visas for the first time. The Syrian refugees would amount to 250,000 to 300,000, according to government estimates that have been provided to us. However, out of these uh, 250,000, we have so far registered only 100,000 Syrian refugees. It was tough when Amar Salam and his family fled the Damascus suburb of Ghouta four months ago. Since then, he's heard many of his neighbors were killed in last month's gas attack. Going back, he says, would mean almost certain death. So today, they're signing on as refugees so they can legally stay. There was shelling and destruction when we left. Ghouta has been besieged for about a year now, cut off from communications, no electricity, nor water. Even food was a problem, he says. A civil war thundered around her. His wife, Safar, says she had to dig deep for courage. I made my heart stronger for the sake of my children. Before, I had a weak heart. But when my children heard a shell coming, they would shake and cry. I had to act strong, she says. Some Syrians were lucky enough to escape with savings. And in parts of Cairo, Syrian businesses are flourishing. The handmade cheese offers a taste of home. But as hard as he tries, it just isn't the same for owner Saad Yunus. Of course, Syrian food tastes better in your own home and in your own country. If you're a refugee, it just doesn't taste the same, he says. Back at the refugee center, nobody talks publicly about the pros and cons of U.S. threats to bomb Syria. Salam is just worried for family and friends he left behind. We're afraid civilians might be hit because many military installations are in residential areas positioned between schools and hospitals, he says. Abu Shami seeks solace by dwelling on happier times. I remember how we all used to sit together, go to birthdays together or walk through old Damascus. Those things are only a memory now, he says. A memory barely flickering amid the ruins of war and survival as a refugee. Carl Penhall, CNN, Cairo.